Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Logan and today we are going to be looking at the Sleepwalkers Tarot by the Vermilion Company, no, Vermilion Collection? Vermilion Collection, sorry. And Achi or Achi or maybe it's just Chi. Uh, I'm a little bit unclear on the artist's name, so my apologies. The art is fabulous. Um, the box says, all characters depicted in this deck have their eyes closed as if dreaming or sleeping, immersing themselves either in the past or in their own subconsciousness. Let's explore the world of tarot with the sleepwalker. So it's a like clamshell style box, really nice quality. Um, the foreword is not in English and I can't remember if this is, I can't remember what language this is and I'm not going to try and guess. Um, but we do have the lovely foil detailing. Uh, all over. This deck also comes in a miniature version, which is not too, too tiny. The miniature is in a, a nice sturdy PVC material uh, for the cards, if I remember correctly. If you hear any strange noises, my cat is napping on the windowsill like two feet away and is making weird cat noises, so. <laughs> uh, everything features them, does it not, when you have cats? So this deck does come with a few extra cards. So we have the two special or bonus cards that it comes with, which are the Sleepwalker, which is beautiful, and then also Sober, which I'm curious to see what the little white book has to say about each of them. I would think Sober could be a cool stand-in for the Temperance card, depending on how you view that card, but we shall see. It also comes with two alternate cards for the Hermit, which this is, I think, the standard card for the Hermit. I already switched it out. Um, and then also an alternate for the High Priestess, which is a bit more traditional and beautiful. These are both really cool. I just preferred the other ones that came with the deck. So let's see, before we jump into the main deck, what the little white book has to say about these two special cards. So Sleepwalker, we'll look at first. Everything's falling, it's fine. <laughs> Um, affected by the energy of the moon, one dances between the ocean and the sky. They feel unprecedentedly relaxed, fearless, and free. Nightmares can no longer scar them. Don't be afraid and go for your dreams. This is, this is really cool. I feel like this mixes bits of fool energy and chariot energy. And I would, I would also say like moon energy if we're looking at it as like a positive uh, lack of awareness of what's going on, maybe. Um, oh, it has upright and reverse meanings. Relaxation, courage, reconciliation, taking the plunge, well-being. And then for reverse, we have moderation, boosted morale, the end, or entering the next stage. Which, if we're looking at somebody sleeping, I feel like that makes sense, especially if they're sleeping and they're mobile. Then we have the sober card. Bathed in sunshine, the girl in pajamas hugs the angel in her dream. Doves represent awakening and vitality. The girl is also the only figure in this deck with eyes open. Yeah, interesting. I didn't notice that before. That's cool. Uh, upright, sobriety, relief, acceptance, forgetfulness, forgiveness, reconciliation, and vitality. And then reversed, shackle, self-restriction, addiction, obsession, and nightmare. Interesting. All right, cool. Um, this little white book does have bits if you'd like to pause the video and look at. I'm not going to read every... Um, entry, but it does cover the majors and the minors. Um, looks like there's a nice message from the author in here as well, and then it's also in another language for the first half, so that is nice, I think. Um, so let's get into the cards. If I didn't say before, these have a lovely linen finish. Uh, I haven't shuffled it yet because I didn't want to get it out of order and then have to put it back in order to do this video. It just came in over the weekend, so... I'm ready to play with it, so <laughs> I want to get the video out of the way. So our first card is the Fool. Um, this deck, you'll probably notice lots of vibrant colors, very fairy tale esque energy and imagery. Um, it's it's very Eurocentric, which I'm of the mind that um, not every single deck has to reflect every single type of person, look, gender race, age. It's nice. It's nice when they do attempt that, but I feel like that's something that's nobody's ever going to get perfect. Um, but yeah, I just want to put that out there. This is a very white deck, which is, you know, it's a little disappointing, um, but I'm, I'm still going to enjoy it uh, for what it is. Um, so we have the Fool, very cute dog down here, individual stepping off the cliff. Instead of the white rose, we have a red rose. 
which I do think works better with the big primary color palette we have going on in the background instead of having these white lines off the sun and then a white rose right next to it. I think it's a nice touch. Um, we still have the bindle. And uh, yeah, you know, they're off. They're doing their thing. I'm not mad at it. It's not my favorite way to depict a fool, but I'm not mad at it. The Magician, I think this one is excellently kinetic. Uh, I love that we still have the roses and the lilies as a callback to the um, RWS image. We still have that Limnoskit or infinity symbol calling us back there as well. But I love that we have this dark clad uh, feminine figure with flowing garments. There's water flowing all around them. There's flowers around them. It feels, it, I don't know. It feels like a good represent, visual representation of what like channeling has been described as. <laughs> when you, you're just filled up with so much inspiration that you have to just let it flow out of you. I think that's a really cool depiction uh, for that card. And, you know, we still have the traditional emblems. The High Priestess. So this is the High Priestess that I opted to keep in because I just really, I think the color scheme's really beautiful. We still have the moon down here. Uh, we still have the crescents in the headdress. We still have the book or scroll happening. And I really love that we have these like morning glories growing next to this figure. Um, there's still water at the feet. I don't need all the traditional RWS stuff. By need, I don't mean like, uh, I'm so familiar with tarot. I don't need that to know what I'm looking like. I don't mean that because that sounds pretentious and stupid. Um, what I mean is I don't need these more traditional elements aesthetically. Like I'm not married to the traditional RWS depictions. Like, as long as I still get the, the ideas across, I'm happy to veer away from that um, just because they're cool, but it's not my favorite image compositions and whatnot, you know? I think they're really cool, but I also like when we deviate a bit. So I was very happy with this one, um, even though the white roses on this one against the blue background with the yellow crescent are just stunning. Um, it's also interesting because as you look at the sky back here, the way the sky is shaded, it almost makes the moon behind the High Priestess look like an open eye, which I think is really cool. I just noticed that, really. Uh, I looked at this deck the other day and did not catch that, so uh, I might have to switch out to that one, actually. <laughs> that was really cool. Um, here we have the Empress, which is our box cover art. Um, really beautiful. I love that there's apples flowing about. I love that they're not pregnant. Um, I don't know. It's just abundant and wild. It, it's like, you know, it's gay abandon. It makes me happy. There's a lot of nature in it. Wind blowing the hair. It's it's a good time. The emperor, I love that we still have the ram here. Uh, I love that this emperor has long flowing locks because there's not a lot of, uh, in my experience at least, not a lot of representation in, in any sort of visual media, but including tarot that has like masculine figures with long hair. And as somebody who um, presents in a masculine way that has long hair. I like seeing it. I like seeing it. Um, I'm really a fan of the color palette here. I love that we have this nice royal red, uh, this greenish, tealish sort of like armor beneath the cloak is really beautiful. I love the little diamond detailing in the, the, the purple in the sky. It really gives us more of that royal feeling. There are mountains in the background, which are fantastic for emperors, I think. Um, yeah. I'm into it. I'm really into it. I also love that there's a sense of movement to a lot of the cards, and these, like, cloudy bits make me unreasonably happy. For the Hierophant, uh, not a fan of religious imagery in general in my decks, but I do think this is beautifully done. I love that the Hierophant is gigantic, and so it does really feel like they are bridging some sort of gap in whatever knowledge they're bestowing on, like, the smaller people. That made no sense as an explanation. I'm sorry, I'm not going to try try to paraphrase it because it probably won't be better but I this has a larger than life mythical quality to it that I think is really really cool and I enjoy that enough to look past the religious connotations and you know these little small people they can still be like nah man piss off we're not going to listen to uh what you're telling us is you know how we should interact with the world or with source or whatever you know I'm, I'm still into it not my fave but I'm still into it that was my one thing when I was looking at this deck I was like I really love the art style. Um, I think a lot of the depictions are cool as fuck. But sadly, uh, like, am I going to be able to handle the Christian imagery and the heteronormativity 
in some of the cards, like the lovers, where instead of having like ambiguous figures, it is very clearly what looks like a man and a woman. Um, but you know, it's a very traditional deck, so it comes with the territory sometimes. Uh, and then ultimately, obviously, I decided it was still worth my time. Um, for the lovers, you know, we have an angel, whatever. Um, it's well done. We have the snake. It's very Christian, so I just kind of pretend. I just kind of pretend it's not there. Uh, we've had that in so many decks, and I'm just like, mm, I really don't. I really don't need the Bible in everything that I do. Thank you. Yeah. As a recovering Christian person who is uh, no longer Christian, so we have the chariot, which is quite striking. Colors I think are quite beautiful. The composition is really lovely. I love it when elements of a card art like go uh, goes outside of the borders of the card. I think that's really cool, especially when it's mindfully done. I will say that with this chariot card, it gives me the same issue that I have with a lot of them, which is for a card that's about forward movement, I don't like sphinxes or whatever mounts are in the front pulling the carriage or the chariot to be lounging. I'm sure there's a reason that it's drawn that way and there's symbolism in that, but it never gives me the momentum that I'm looking for. Uh, but it is beautiful all the same. I loved this strength card. It gave me the Lich from Adventure Time almost immediately. Um, I did mistakenly think it was the devil for a second just because of the horns, but I love this as strength. Um, very, very heavy into the courage aspect of it. Um, but I suppose we can still get some of that vulnerability because this figure is unarmored. Um, again, we just have these really great cloud details. I love how swirling everything is, if that makes sense. Like, there's constant presence of wind. There's wispy clouds everywhere. There are cloaks billowing. There's a lot of movement in the deck. And the color choices in this as well, even though they're a bit on the muted side, except for this area here, it's just really lovely how this green plays with the reds and the oranges. Um, same thing with this cool bluish tone in the metal. It's just really lovely. So this is the Hermit card that I opted for. Um, I I just, I love classic Hermit imagery with the like lanterns and stuff, and I love the colors in this one. I think this bonus one that they included is a much more interesting interpretation of the Hermit. Um, but the color story is just not, not really for me. I'm not, I'm not huge on just straight up black and like really cool green together tone green uh, but I might change my mind let's see who knows wheel of fortune so yeah there's a lot there's a lot that's classic in the deck um, but I do feel like it's a refreshing take on those classic RWS images justice hanged man You know, there are, there's not maybe going to be as much I'm going to rave about <laughs> in every single image since they are so classic. Like, I know I lost my shit over the Dreaming Cat Tarot in the last video, even though a lot of those images were extremely true to the RWS. Um, so with this, it's not adorable cats, so I'm probably going to uh, gush less about every single image, but we do still get a lot of the nice... Uh, callbacks like the glowing sort of like halo of enlightenment or whatever not halo uh, nimbus maybe behind the hanged figure's head I think that's a nice detail to hold on to temperance I think it's interesting that the angel this time is coming from up above um, because you still have even though it's not like one foot in the water and one foot on the land and and like with the traditional temperance showing that sort of balance between two very different things. Uh, we do still have a figure coming from the sky to interact with earthly things. So I figure, I think we still get uh, a bit of that um, <clears throat> interaction between opposites. Let me know what you think. The devil. Um, it's very stony and dark. I wish it had a lot of the vibrancy and color that a lot of these other cards have, especially with something as fun as like a devil card. I feel like you could really play with color a lot in that. And this is just very subdued and muted, which if we're looking at the devil through like the lens of restriction and oppression and things like that, I can see how that color story would work. Um, but I do find it a bit sad that we don't get the same beautiful color that we get in a lot of the other cards. It seems like a missed opportunity. I will also say 
Um, I'm not crazy about the devil. I have to look and see when we get to the other kind of like any other negative cards. Um, I'm not crazy about the, the devil being the only dark skinned individual in this. I realize it's like a dark gray. And so maybe that's fine. Maybe I'm overly sensitive. I know I am a lot of the time, but um, yeah, I'm just like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Um, we have the tower, which I love a floating tower card. I mean, maybe it's not floating. Maybe it's connected to the water down there. But either way, beautiful. Love the dark blues against these nice bright reds. Um, I don't, we don't have the classic lightning bolt. I'm okay with that. I don't, for me, it's not necessary. And I think this is a lot more beautiful for not having it. This star card, though, is really cool. Just the, the color play between the blue and the orange, I think, is gorgeous and fascinating. I'm also curious as to if there's, like, a through line of story somehow, because this is looks like it's not the exact same dress, but the, the neckline going into the bust area on this garment is very similar across both uh, the star and the empress. So I'm going to keep my eyes out to see if there's any other similarities. I think this is a cool moon card. Um... I love the, the movement that's down here with the dog, the wolf, and the lobster. I think that's really cool. Um, the colors, I think, are vibrant. They work well. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that we needed the sleeping angel in the moon, but, you know, I'm not mad at the rest of it. The sun card is, I think, really beautiful. There's definitely a lot of heat to it. Uh, I love that we get to see the sunflowers turning to face that heat source and really soaking it up. Um, I think it's really nice. I also appreciate that there's no damn creepy baby in it. Judgment. Nothing new. Nothing innovative. Well done. Beautiful. But, you know, as I've said, I, I don't need more Christian angel-y stuff in, stuff in my decks. <laughs> but that's just me. Obviously, I'm going to be able to live with it. I think the deck is gorgeous, and I can just, you know, whatever. It's fine. Um, the world. I do I do enjoy their their purpley garment. Um, outside of that, this doesn't do anything for me. Ace of Cups. Really beautiful colors again. Two of Cups. Love the movement and the water, and then you have the wings, and just these floating scarf moments. I think are really beautiful. Same thing here. It's almost... The coloring in the back with like the white lines going down it's almost like there's a waterfall behind them or rain or something to that effect um it's a good time you know it's not groundbreaking but it's beautiful this four of cups i think is really beautiful the colors these ring like um objects that are in the card i appreciate that the cups all look different um yeah i think it's really beautiful the touch of this like taupey beige type of color plays really nicely against the blues and purples as well. So here we have again a more muted color story with the five, which I understand and I get and I can appreciate. I think this one for me is a lot better than with the devil because unlike the devil, we still have some pops of color. I guess it's arguable. You still get pops of color in this one. It's just I don't find the brown or the red to be particularly exciting. I feel like they're a bit dull, whereas this gold has a bit more nuance to it. Like there's some red shading around the edges. Um, I don't know. It just feels a bit more alive. This just feels so dull to me. <laughs> it's such a bummer. I love the devil. It's such a good card. It's one of my faves. I wasn't expecting this one to be as like, oh, I don't care for this uh, upon video walkthrough, but here we are. I'm still really excited to use it, though. Six of Cups. Adorable. Very adorable. I can live with it. Um, I think the Seven of Cups is really pretty. I love the yellow to pink sort of like ombres in the background. Um, the contents of the cups are all fun and interesting. We have a cool dragon down here. We have these like rays of golden... <sighs> rays of golden sun. Am I about to start quoting The Sound of Music? <laughs> Um, I'm not, uh, and unintentionally at least, that uh, go past the border. I, I appreciate that. Um, this Eight of Cups, I think, is really beautiful. The color story is quite nice. Um, I also appreciate that all the cups are not broken. There's not necessarily anything wrong about what this figure is walking away from. In a lot of ways, there's probably a lot right with what this figure is walking away from, but it's just not right for them. 
And I, I like that in an Eight of Cups. Nine of Cups is, this rendition is pure chaos. Uh, I don't understand why there's an angel with a bunch of hands and a lot of cups and, and how that relates to the themes of the Nine of Cups at this moment, but I think it's beautiful. I'm, I'm not opposed to spending time with it and getting to know it better. Uh, Ten of Cups, the color choices and saturation, I guess many of the color choices on this one are almost a bit like oversaturated Disney to the point of making me want to barf just a little bit, but it is a beautiful card. Uh, I'm, I'm just a fussy, fussy, fussy person. Um, but it, it's quite lovely. I enjoy that we don't have the human figures in it. We have the King of Cups, which is quite lovely. I'm not totally certain why all of the roots are growing around in our cup suit. Um, I guess because the waters nourish things, maybe? I don't know. Um, like, I find the restriction for this Queen of Cups very interesting and a bit odd. Are they mer people? Is that what's happening? No, those look like two distinct legs. Uh, but this looks very, uh, like, scaly. Maybe maybe they're just a mer person. Uh, the Knight of Cups, I do appreciate the movement and the knights, especially when we get to the Knight of Wands, I believe. Um, I love that the Knight of Cups has a, a bouquet of roses in their, in their goblet. I think that's iconic uh, Knight of Cups uh, energy. I really love that. The sword is really beautiful. Um, yeah, I think they nailed the romance for that one. Page of Cups. I love how much space this figure takes up on the card. I love that, for me at least, they're very androgynous. Um, we still have a little tiny fish in the cup. I love that they're holding an illuminated rose. It just, it captures the dreaminess and the potential for so many big things, I feel like. Also the like pink waterfall vibes in the background. It's really nice. Ace of Wands, really enjoy. Two of Wands, I love that we get the earth up here or a globe or whatever. I feel like that's encouraging our um, plan making, our map making, plotting type of energy that we get in the Two of Wands. I think the colors are vibrant and I love the contrast with the blue planetary moments, um, celestial body moments against the oranges and reds and yellows. I think it really works. For the Three of Wands, it looks like we have the same figure. They've mapped out their course, and now they are getting ready to tear it up and get there, and I appreciate that. I also love how the fiery colors stand out against the night sky. Four of Wands is a very, very traditional, but it's well done. But I mean, it's it's not exciting to me. It's super traditional. This is also not exciting to me, and not for nothing, the colors sometimes with these reds and yellows does make me want pizza. <laughs> That's just me, maybe. Um, Six of Wands, I think this is really cute, having the young individual um, kind of swept up in the romance and or gallantry of the returning night vibes. Very classic image, though. Uh, Seven of Wands, again, I'm, 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 I have to read the guidebook, I guess. Maybe there's a reason that we have so many angel wings everywhere. Um, this is a bit monochromatic for me. I know that we do have the greens coming up on some of these wands or staffs, but uh, it's a little, little one note and flat for me. Um, same with the Eight of Wands, which is fine. Like, how often do you love every single card in a deck? I feel like most of the time there's a few we love, there's a lot that we appreciate, and then there's a few that we're just like, mm, <laughs> I don't know what was going on there, but we're, we're all allowed mistakes, so I'm gonna cut the creator some grace. <clears throat> the Nine of Wands, very traditional, not my fave. Um, I appreciate the addition of a battered shield. Um, we have some leg wounds. Maybe get that looked at. Uh, Ten of Wands, very traditional. Uh, again, with the greens and the yellows and the reds, I appreciate that that can be fiery wand energy, but it still, as an Italian-American person, gives me pizza, it gives me lasagna, um, <laughs> gives me spinach on my pizza. It makes me a little hungry. Look at this oregano king, you know? Um, I think this is a really cool image. We have the sunflowers. Uh, we have a lion, which is really cool, which you totally probably can already tell. Um, I enjoy it. I enjoy the movement in it. Uh, I think the shade of green for the cloak is really gorgeous. 
the hair is very much so giving me Sleeping Beauty for some reason. I know it's short, but just the, the color, the, the oomph to it. Queen of Wands, I appreciate that we got to keep our little black cat. It has a cute little bell on the collar, which I'm a slut for. Um, Color-wise, it's a little flat for me, but I think it's pretty. Knight of Wands, I think, is really fun. Um, I think it's really, really fun. I love that it's a black unicorn. I love that we have this pop of blue in the back um, with some cooler tones from both Rider and Mount. Uh, I love that there's like a gemstone or something at the top of the rod. I think that's cool. Um, you know, could it, it would I like to see some other colors in there? Even just like slight shading? Yeah, I think that would help. It's a little flat, but I think it's cool. Page of Wands. Again, why do we have angels? What, <laughs> what's happening? Uh, Ace of Swords, I think is really pretty, really classic. Um, interesting choice. You have the hand cut off and we have bone, but I mean, we're dealing with swords, so. Um, I think this Two of Swords is one of the prettiest cards in the deck. There's a lot of motion, or soon to be a lot of motion in it. Um, I guess you could also look at this as the figure is ready, is, is poising themselves to strike uh, when the moment is right, and maybe the moment just isn't right because there's so much swirling chaos around them, and maybe that gives us the indecision. I don't know, but we have these really beautiful butterflies, uh, these purple to blue ombre like ribbon moments. The red dress in the middle really anchors it nicely, I think. I love that one sword is white and one sword is black. We have these gorgeous pink bushes or something at the bottom, or mist or something. It's just, I'm I'm a fan of it. And we, we still have the crescent uh, from the RWS Two of Swords. I believe it was in the same position. Three of Swords. For a card that, for me at least, is a lot about processing grief. Um moving through our feelings so that we can, you know, learn from them and get to the other side. I don't understand so much grayness without some sort of vibrance to it, because I don't think pain is dull and dark. I think a lot of the times it can be bright and hot. Um, so yeah, just my two cents. It's still beautifully done. Um, I think this is really interesting. I'm not quite sure how the figure standing relates to what we can see, uh, what we get a lot of the times with the Four of Swords energy. Um, but I'm curious. I'm curious and I'm willing. Their sword is facing down. It's not like they're preparing to swing it. So maybe there is that little notion of taking a break there. Um, not my favorite color combo, but I do think it's effective uh, against the gray. Not gonna lie, this one read a little basic to me. I feel like the colors are a little basic and these, these hoop earrings are just not giving me what I need. I love a hoop earring, but in this moment, with this exact hair, with this outfit, with this kind of eh, color palette, I'm mm, it's a little basic for me. Is she a little basic? I feel like this is a bit off the rack for a tarot deck character. Um, now, now we get some drama in the six. I feel like this, there's a lot of good color drama going on. The way the this golden yellow kind of saffrony color pops against the like periwinkle in the background and the deeper blues. We have this nice kind of uh, rusty orange color over here. I think it's really nice. This Seven of Swords is doing so much with color, um, almost too much, but not in a bad way, I don't think. I like it. I think it's cool. Um, <clears throat> I like when you bring, I like when we can bring a bit of lightheartedness to a Seven of Swords or a bit of thoughtfulness to where it's not just a matter of like, man, somebody's out to fuck you over. Because like, nobody cares what you're doing usually like I feel like it's very rare that anybody is actively trying to maliciously fuck you over personally as an individual um and I think this card gets blown out of proportion a lot so I don't know having a more silly approach with a jester and, and the mice I think is fun do I understand it not quite yet I haven't worked with the deck but I think it's fun the eight of swords is very standard. Nine of Swords is not standard, but, um, you know, why do we have, why? why? I, it's okay. I just want to know why. <laughs> There's things I don't understand happening in this deck, and that's okay. I'm going to work with it. I'm going to come up with stories in my head as to why, and then it'll be fine. But right now, having not really spent time with the deck yet, my initial reaction to Angel getting snowed on and, and, 
grayscale is Y. The tin is tinning. Um, I don't feel like there's a whole lot of difference between the two, personally, in the mood, but that's just me. Um, King of Swords, I think, is stunning. I love the amount of blue that we have and the gray within that pop of the warm yellow from the moon. I think it's stunning. I also appreciate this more intense pop of blue from the fairy on their shoulder. Again, we have that nice windy weather happening. We have long hair billowing in the breeze. Little starlit sparkly bits. Queen of Swords is stunning. <laughs> Hello. There's a reason I bought this deck. Um, and it's for these more colorful, stunning images because I can put up with some of them being lackluster for me uh, when some of them are just so damn good. I appreciate all the threads that are sort of holding this sword in place, uh, or maybe that this queen has wrapped around them and is about to cut through. I feel like it really shows a level of intention, like thoughtful intention when it comes to establishing your boundaries or cutting through things that we don't always get in the Queen of Swords. And I think it's an important distinction to make on the heels of the Knight of Swords where we don't get that. I like it a lot. Knight of Swords, very colorful. It's cute. It's well done. Color scheme is very not for me, but bravo. Page of Swords is stunning. Uh, I'm just a fan of the night sky blues with golden elements. Um, and I think this is absolutely beautiful. Ace of Pentacles. Okay, so no, all the suits apparently have are showing a little bit of... Uh, dismemberment and I just noticed it on that ace of swords okay all right it's weird but I can I can deal with it uh two we have a fun little jester which is cute three I think the perspective on this one is really nice the four it's interesting I'm very curious to uh spend some time with it lightly peruse the little white book to see if they just explain any of the stories that are going on in the cards but if not, that's okay. Um, the Monsoon Tarot explains nothing, and I've had a really good time coming up with my own reasoning on why certain imagery was chosen for that deck. So if that has to happen this time, that's cool too. Uh, we have very obvious uh, physical damages and injuries on the our characters in the Five of Pentacles, which, you know, I'm here for that. Uh, I think this window is stunning. The stained glass on it, the vining. We have the little grapes in the back. Um, beautiful. Again, beautiful color choices for the six. Seven, really pretty green tones. I appreciate this slight ombre from like the yellow from the sunset glow to the deeper oranges and then more reddish oranges in the, in the land behind the figure. Really pretty. I also think they're framed really well with the uh, vining bits. Eight of Pentacles. Very, very standard. Doesn't excite me, but it gets the job done. Nine. Very beautiful. Striking colors. Exciting? No, for me, but you know, it gets the job done. Ten of Pence. Uh, the dress immediately, the tone of pink, made me think of, perhaps, like, erroneously, but it made me think of Sleeping Beauty's dress, like, you know, when it was... When they were having a fit over what color it should be, uh, it reminds me of that pink tone just a little bit, which makes me happy because that was my one of my favorite uh, Disney movies growing up. Um, otherwise, you know, it's 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 fine, it's fine. I I don't know how much we need to see like riches and, uh, you know, hetero shit on Ten of Pentacles cards, but it's whatever. Um, King of Pentacles. Totally fine. It's fine. It's fine. I've never been a huge fan of, like, the grapes and the pentacle cards, to be honest. Um, for whatever stupid reason. The queen of pentacles. I think it's interesting that we have this sort of, like, um, I don't know if that's, like, a... Not antelope, but, like, one of those types of creatures. Or if this is supposed to be, like, a dragon head with horns on the throne. I'm not sure what it is. We do have lots of bunnies, which, that's adorable. Um, yeah, I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it or at all. Her dress is cute. Um, Knight of Pentacles, well done, vibrant, not mad at it. And then Page of Pentacles, you know, vibrant, not the most exciting composition for me. 
personally, but I'm not mad at it either. Um, I do really think that the greens of these card backs are stunning, though. So, yeah, um, <laughs> that was rambly. Thanks so much for hanging out with me while we looked at this deck. Um, do I want to switch this one out? Mm, it's like the, the vibes, the watery vibes in this one are so good, but then having the night sky being like a, a third eye in the background is so cool in this one, and I love the roses in this one. We're going to, we're, we're just, we're just going to see. We're just going to see, okay? <laughs> we're just going to see what happens. Um, so yeah, this has been the Sleepwalker Sarrow from the Vermilion Collection. Um, I purchased it last week. It arrived very, very, very quickly. Um, it's always well packaged. This is my second deck from them. The quality is always really nice. Um, not super, super thick cards, but not thin. I would say this is like 350 GSM, which is what a lot of indie decks are or were before the 400 GSM thing took over and everybody was like, <laughs> we need uh, roof shingles for our cards. <laughs> Um, so it's easy for me to handle even with my small hands. Um, but yeah, I recommend, um, I don't remember the exact pricing. You can find it on their website. I know there's been a lot of conversation lately about, you know, should people who make deck walkthroughs or reviews list, uh, prices, mention the prices in their videos. Um, if you're somebody who likes that, that's great. If you want to do that, that's great. I personally never look for that when I'm looking at videos of decks or video games or anything like that. Like, that's just one more step that I don't mind doing. I don't need somebody to tell me, and this cost X many dollars. It was probably like 55 and I want to say it, it was free shipping. Um, but I don't mind looking up for myself. It takes me two seconds to Google how much a thing is. So for me, not a big thing. I probably won't mention them, mention a price again in a video. Just, but yeah, anyway, that's enough on that. Enough people are talking about that who are making more articulate labored points than I am. And <laughs> good for them. Not a conversation I feel like joining in on. Uh, just wanted to acknowledge that briefly, I guess, for some reason. Thank you so much for sitting with me and looking at this deck today. Um, let me know if it's one that you think you would vibe with or if it's not for you. I don't know where my fool card went. Um, and if you have it, let me know what you think of it. Have you been able to make sense of some of the the uh, very, very non-traditional cards or imagery that we got in some of the minors? Um, what are your thoughts on the colors, cardstock, all that kind of stuff? Uh, and in the meantime, yeah, thank you so much. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Goodbye.